the Zion Crane 4, the Ronin DJI RS3 Pro. Two popular gimbals out there for heavy payload cameras. Let's take a look at them. I have the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Finding a gimbal for it is hard. It's oversized. It's a little bit heavy for some of the older gimbals. Right now on Amazon Prime, you can buy either one of these with a 30-day return, no questions asked policy. So I figured I would try both and see which one works best for me. I'm not particularly brand new to the world of gimbals. I currently do use, made by Zion, the Smooth 4 for my phone. But more importantly, for the last eight years, I've used this bad boy right here, the Flycam. It's a bit of an old fashioned rig that uh, worked, but I wanted to get something a little more modern and uh, figured I'd get these two. So let's take a look at both of these. We are comparing the combo units of both gimbals. I feel like the combo units, for a few extra bucks, you're getting things that are necessary. Now this is not going to be an unboxing video, but it is important to discuss how they're packed. So they both come with these handy travel cases. The Zion Crane is basically ready to go. All you have to attach is the tripod if you're using it and the plate. With the DJI Ronin, it's a little bit more involved, but to me, it's worth it. You get so much more with this device. Let's take a look at the similarities between the two of them. They both perform the basic gimbal functions that you'll find on just about any gimbal, and I'm referring to the modes. Both of them do pan follow, pan tilt follow, FPV, the lock mode, the selfie mode, and of course, the ever popular vortex mode. They both have apps that are both iOS and Android compatible, free to use, that work as a remote control for the gimbal. So you can use your phone to roll the camera, do a pan, do a tilt, reset it, start and stop recording, what it doesn't do is it doesn't have a video monitor feed through the app. It's just a remote control that either you can use or another camera operator can utilize. Another similarity with these two gimbals are the sub menus. You can perform panoramic shots, time lapse, motion lapse. You can set the drag of the joystick, the roll. You can set the slider for the focus motor, for the ISO, for the shutter. It's all programmable. As far as the payload, the Zion Crane advertises 13 pounds of a, a payload, whereas the DJI Ronin is 10 pounds. They both weigh roughly the same, which is around three and a half to 3.7 pounds, depending on if you're using the tripod or any other accessories that you're adding to it. Both of these gimbals advertise 12 hours of shoot time. As someone who owns the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, good luck testing that. Um, I've had both of these out for up to two or three hours at a time. There wasn't an issue with the battery dying. I think after three hours, it was still at 65, 70% on both of them. Both of these gimbals have multiple USB ports built into them that will control the light, the focus motor, uh, image transmissions, Bluetooth control. Let's take a look at the differences between these two. Not all of these differences are negatives. They're not a con to the pro. It's just a matter of what you want for your personal need and if it applies to you or not. So let's take a look at the price differential first. On the combo unit, there is roughly a $300 difference between these two. However, there is something to consider with this price factor. With the DJI Ronin, you are getting the focus motor, the phone holder, and an image transmitter that they call the Raven Eye. But if you wanted to buy that for the Zion Crane 4, you're adding $300 to that price already, and you're pretty much already at the same price as the combo unit. Another feature that I really like about the phone holder and the Raven Eye on the DJI Ronin is that you can use that image transmitter to transmit what you're recording to your phone or tablet. So not only can someone else monitor what you're watching, they can perform the remote control functions of the pan, the tilt, the roll, start and stop of recording, and in some cases, autofocus. 
where it comes handy for a single operator use is if you just want to monitor what you're recording, you can use your phone as a monitor and not have to rebalance the gimbal. What I really like about the crane is the wrist rest. So you have this device here that, you know, alleviates pressure along the wrist. So if you're doing a, you know, suitcase mode, flashlight mode, something down low, it really does alleviate some of the pressure on your wrist. The other thing is the side grip. I like having this type of grip as opposed to this type of grip. I feel like you're more balanced when your hands are separated like this. If you're left-handed, this is not really the best option because with this grip, to try to put that on this side, so this would be reversed, you could only move this forward and, and not back anymore. They have the joystick, the record, and the mode button here on the left-hand side. So if you're right-handed, that's, that's fine. If you're left-handed, you're kind of doing a little bit of a stretch on your thumb. On the Ronin, this extra handle that comes with it is, uh, you know, you can move it up, have it down, have it be out here, depending on what usage you, uh, you have for it. And of course, you can move this to the other side and so on, so it doesn't have to be you know, on that side. This is definitely friendlier for left-handed people, for the 10% of you out there that it matters. The buttons are in the center, so it's friendly for both left and right-handed people because you're working the buttons in the middle. Both of them have this same function where the trigger that's in the front of them, when you hit it once, it re-centers the gimbal. When you hit it three times, it rolls it back into selfie mode. One of the things I really like about the Ronin RS3 Pro is when you go into standby mode, it automatically locks all three axes, which is great. If you're on a shoot and you're, you just you know, set it down for a minute, you tap the power button once, it locks all three axes. It's great, you don't have to worry about the camera rolling or anything like that. On the Zion Crane, we have this fill light right here which is handy if you are doing wedding videography, uh, if you do ghost hunting, if you go into abandoned buildings or outside at nighttime. It can be a problem for some people because it stops, it prevents you doing a full tilt. You know, it blocks the tilt axis. So if you're in suitcase mode, or flashlight mode, you know, you're kind of limited to how far, this is as far as it'll go because of the light. So once again, if that is something that would be a deal breaker for you. So what I like about charging the Ronin is this is the only part that you need to charge. Neither one of them comes with a LiDAR and someone who uses the Blackmagic 6K Pro, we don't have autofocus. I don't need that, which is why I prefer the focus motor. If you're using a gimbal, there are ways that you can get away without even needing a focus motor. If you shoot at 5.6 or f8 and you can keep the same distance between your gimbal and your subject, then you might not need the focus motor. What you would need is if you're going to do the hero pose, you're going to walk up to something. Uh, sure, you could set your focus point and have it be out of focus until you hit them. But if you're doing sports, if you're doing weddings, if you're doing a lot of documentary run and gun type of stuff, I think having the focus motor is a huge uh, thing to have uh, because you can't always trust the autofocus on your camera, especially if a lot of people and things are moving around. I really wanted to like this one the most. Obviously I wanted to save a couple hundred dollars, but it comes down to the design and there's two things aside from the left-handed thing, which I'll leave out of the equation. This I think applies to everybody. So it's in the design, it's metal on metal, which when you're adjusting the three access points, it's, you know, I think over time that's gonna become a problem and wear it down more. On the Ronin, it's aluminum alloy and carbon fiber. It's just a much nicer design. It just feels nicer. You have this little wheel to slide the plate forward and back when you're setting the tilt balance on this thing just feels a little more solid than this. There's one other thing that's important to discuss. This, I almost didn't use this gimbal because of it. 
So this is the plate that your camera sits on. It sits on top of this. This just slides over and locks into place. You might say, okay, well that's no big deal, but it's on top of this. If you don't have this in place, even if it's locked, it can come right off. So here's my problem with this is this plate, it, okay, it slides over and then locks into place here. You lock it, you're good to go. But if you're not past this point here on the gimbal and you lock it, it's not that sturdy. I know, you should lock it, right? Put it in, make sure you check everything. But it just seems like if I'm putting a $3,000 to $6,000 camera on this. I want something a little more secure. On this unit, it's a little difficult sometimes to take the plate out because it sits inside these little grooves here. So, you know, it, it doesn't always slide out that easily, but I like that, you know, it's secure. So that even if it's not locked, it's not going anywhere because it's wedged in between these two grooves. I really like that. And it has an extra lock on there anyway, so you know that's a good thing to have. I don't think you can go wrong with either one. It's it's probably just me. I've seen videos where somebody had this on a car mount, so I'm sure it's fine. I just don't. Uh, I'm not putting my camera on there. Sorry, and I don't need the light. It would be nice if you could remove the light, but I get it. They're trying to you know, can't you know, please everybody all the time, can you? There's a misconception that if you put your camera on a gimbal, you're automatically going to get this great stable footage. It's, for the most part, it's true, but it's not. You have to learn how to walk with it. You have to learn how to move your wrist. You know, it's a little bit of an art form. It's like any other piece of equipment that you get. The first time that you use it, you're learning. Get out there with it every day and use it, practice with it. It's a great tool to have. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Would love to hear from you. Um, are you considering either one of these? Do you have either one of these? Tell me your thoughts on it. Was there something I missed? You can't go wrong with either one. Uh, so pick which one's right for you. Hopefully this information helps and will help you make a better decision. Once again, thank you again, everybody, and uh, take care.